Baseball, having evolved from the game of rounders, is at its heart a child's game. Growing up in the city, it was easy to start a baseball game. All you needed was a stick and a rubber ball for equipment, gather a few friends, find an open space such as an empty lot, or even a city street where the car's bumpers could serve as a base. Boom, you've got a baseball game. It should be of no surprise, therefore, that this children's game has attracted many children at heart to play professionally. The childish exploits of the great Babe Roof and his soft spot for children fans are well known in the baseball world. But childlike exploits as an adult often go hand in hand with childlike irresponsibility. And this could be a problem when a grown man cannot control his behavior or curb childlike excesses. It often takes great patience to see the potential of such a player. Such was the case of George Edward Rube Waddell. Waddell's childlike exploits are well known. Waddell had a penchant for fire engines and was known to stay for days at fire stations. If the manager could not find Waddell on the day he was supposed to start, often the best place to look would be under the stands where Waddell was playing marbles with local children. But with this childlike behavior, there came excesses. Waddell was a rampant alcoholic. His lack of responsibility combined with his alcoholism caused him to wear out his welcome with many a manager. That is, until he caught the eye of Connie Mack. In 1900, Waddell was suspended from the Pirates. During his suspension, he played semi-professional ball with a number of teams in western Pennsylvania. Mack, then the manager of the Milwaukee Brewers of the Western League, convinced Pittsburgh to allow Waddell to play for the Brewers. But after pitching well for Milwaukee, the Pirates asked for Waddell back. The relationship didn't last long as Pittsburgh sold Waddell to the Chicago Orphans, where Waddell jumped ship in 1901. Waddell started the 1902 season with the Los Angeles Lulus of the California League, but soon Connie Mack came knocking again, convincing Waddell to join the Philadelphia Athletics of the newly formed American League. Despite joining the team on June 26, Waddell ended the season with 24 wins. He led the American League in strikeouts with 210. Unlike his prior managers, Mack seemed to have the patience to deal with Waddell's erratic behavior. During the fall of 1902, for example, when the Phillies and the Athletics attempted to create a professional football league, Waddell was made part of the Athletics team so Mack could keep an eye on him during the offseason. Mack's patience paid off. Waddell became the dominant left-hander of the fledgling American League, leading the league in strikeouts from 1902 through 1907. Waddell posted a record of 131 wins against 62 losses with the Athletics and an ERA of 1.97. Max sold Waddell to the St. Louis Browns after Waddell's performance in the last month of the 1907 season contributed to the A's losing the pennant to Detroit. The emotional bond between Waddell and Mack remained strong until Waddell's death in 1914. Waddell contracted pneumonia in 1911, working to secure a farm in Kentucky from a flood. His weakened immune system made Waddell susceptible to tuberculosis. When Waddell's health deteriorated to the point of needing the care of a sanitarium, Mack and A's owner Ben Scheib paid for his medical bills until his death on April Fool's Day in 1914. Thank you for watching. Please leave any comments below. Give me a like if you enjoyed this video. And if you want to see more of these types of videos, please subscribe.